Welcome back. Let's talk sports now. LeBron James stole headlines at Wednesday's ESPYs when he got on stage and announced this. The real question for me is, can I play without cheating this game? The day I can't give the game everything on the floor is the day I'll be done. Lucky for you guys, that day is not today. <laughs> After the Lakers' final game of the season, LeBron hinted he'd consider retiring, but our next guest was always skeptical about that. Joining us live is Jovan Buha, Lakers beat writer for The Athletic, the go-to guy for all things Lakers, just back from a road trip to Las Vegas, where he spent too much time in Las Vegas, but yet he still has his money. Jovan, good to see you. Good to see you, Alex. All right, so LeBron at the ESPYs making that big announcement. I know most people didn't think he was actually going to retire, but what was that all about, that whole game? Yeah, well, after the initial 24 to 48 hours of shock wore off uh, around the organization, uh, most people, Lakers, knew that LeBron was coming back. Uh, there was just no way he was going to retire, uh, go out that way. Uh, so I think, honestly, it was a mix of frustration at being swept after having the, the type of performance that he had in game four, 40 points, nine rebounds, nine assists, uh, and then also him applying a little bit of pressure on the organization. Uh, we know in uh, the previous offseason and at the trade deadline, he had wanted Kyrie Irving. Uh, from what I've been told, uh, that was one of his preferred outcomes for the offseason was the Lakers landing Kyrie uh, finally, and that ultimately didn't happen, but uh, he the moves on Instagram by posting a photo of each of the new guys that they signed, each of the guys that they re-signed, uh, and, you know, I think most people around the team kind of took that as LeBron's on board with what we did. So yeah. uh, I think it was just a formality in terms of when he was going to announce his return, and he decided to give it a couple weeks. Uh, meanwhile, uh, one of the guys who could be really good next year was a guy who was on their roster last year and barely got any playing time. That was Max Christie, who was a rookie last year. He's been in summer league and really dominating summer league. You just did a big profile about him for The Athletic. Um, what's going on with him? Max has been the story of the summer for the Lakers in terms of their young players. Uh, they're very high on him. They believe he could be that eighth or ninth guy in the rotation next year, uh, take over that backup shooting guard, backup small forward spot, even potentially start if he continues on this ascension right now. Uh, so I, I talked to him uh, last week in Las Vegas, and he was talking about not being satisfied with his summer league showing of this is summer league. Like, I'm supposed to do this. Uh, I'm ready for training camp. I'm ready for the regular season to really show my improvement there. And earn a spot in the rotation. So everything he's doing right now, uh, he, he's big on taking care of his body. I, I wrote last season about him learning from LeBron in that regard in, in terms of rest and recovery. He's been golfing before every game. So he's trying all these different things uh, to maximize his performance. And so far, uh, so good. So I, I think he, he's a big piece of their future. And compared himself kind of to, to Austin Reeves, who a lot of people thought was not going to be a big deal and turned out to be a star and kind of came out of nowhere. So maybe that'll happen with Max Christie, which would be great for Rob Palinka. Uh, we know, he says, who's the general manager of the Lakers, that he wants to add at least another big guy. What moves are you hearing? What's likely to happen the rest of the summer for the Lakers? So if you look at the Lakers depth chart right now, the one remaining hole is at the center spot. Uh, Jackson Hayes technically is the backup five right now behind Anthony Davis, but he's yet to prove that he is an every night player. I think the Lakers are high on him uh, and believe he can become that, uh, but they need a third center, uh, especially when you look at potential matchups against uh, Nikola Jokic, uh, Joel Embiid, and some of the elite centers across the league. So uh, if Anthony Davis goes down for 20, 25 games, you can't have one big man on your roster. You need at least a couple. So right. the Lakers are targeting a third center for that 14th roster spot. Uh, a couple names I've reported are Christian Wood and Bismack Biombo. Uh, each guy gives a little bit something different. Uh, Wood is more of a scorer sure. and a floor spacer, not as strong of a defender. Bismack Biombo is that prototypical, hard-nosed, tough big man. Good screener, good finisher, uh, good shot blocker. So each guy kind of gives the Lakers a different strength there. But uh, sure. I think either one would definitely bolster the roster. And, uh, you know, once they do that, I, I think it's been an A offseason for them. There you go. Uh, not exactly household names, but maybe we'll learn them soon. Yovan Buha, thank you so much. Lakers beat writer for The Athletic and the pride of Agora High School in USC. Thank you and fight on. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend.